What's going on everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. As you see here, I, you know, I said I wouldn't do it, but I went on and grinded out the, uh, up to level 50 on the Lava Mancer, and I'm anxious to check out some of the goodness. Definitely some, uh, interesting, cool new things for certain. Anyway, I took the, uh, traditional approach and went with the Harbinger. Now, a couple of quick notes. I'm not really going to go into the full patch notes of uh, the Herald of Embermount patch. However, I will put a link to uh, all the patch notes down in the description below. So just scroll on down and click right there and it'll take you over to the DD2 site. And you can check out all the patch notes yourself. However, we do know, of course, that the Lava Mancer came. And with a uh, new character to get up to 50, we have to ask ourselves the question of what's the quickest way to get there. Now, um, of course, the quickest way to get there is going to be in a group at a higher difficulty level. However, if you are doing it by yourself, uh, like I did, a couple things here to note. Uh, first off, obviously, the Harbinger is the map to do. Now, if you look at the difficulties, the lowest difficulty we have is Campaign. The Campaign mode and the Hard mode give the exact same amount of experience. So there is no reason to do it on hard mode versus campaign mode, it's exactly the same. In fact, on hard mode, the uh, mob has pretty close to the same amount of health and everything. So the additional gold you get for doing it on hard mode is not really much worth it. So, I mean, do it on whatever difficulty you want, but I just did it on campaign because it was the easiest thing to do. Now there is a little bit more of an experience buff once you get up to ex expert mode. It's about 25,000 more experience. The problem is, is it takes a little longer. So if you look at your XP per hour, in my opinion, the best way is still go to just go with the lowest difficulty, which is Campaign and the Harbinger. So let's hop on in and I'll show you what I did here. I guess I need to switch to a, switch to a character that actually has an item power. And then just gonna create up a, a private game. Now, I did this pretty casually, I was not really wanting to do it as a grind, and it actually went by really quick, I got lucky with it. Um, I was watching, I basically did it half AFK and watched the replays of the evening's Olympic events, and was able to get the 50 pretty darn quick after I got home from work. Now I didn't have any time to play at all, really before going to work, I was going to try to get a little bit of additional time, however I just couldn't get myself out of bed. Now the way in the past that we would do this is we would get out one of the original heroes like the huntress and we would use the experience bonus skill spheres now of course those aren't working now so you want to have three level 50s in your deck besides the lava mancer that you're building and then get on your ev2 dps if you have that available as it's definitely the fastest way um, basically, as soon as the map loads in, just assume the position there with your number three and just get ready to spam laser beams. And it burns pretty darn quick. I don't even need, really even bother letting off the mouse button. I just let it spray the whole time. For the first three waves, anyway. Alright, now after that point, of course, he's going to switch to the boat. So I just turn around, assume the position again. And knock it out pretty quickly. Now you see with, uh, well we will see once all this loads, that with the three level 50s in the dex deck, we're going to get 133,000 XP per run. Now obviously if you grind this out and you do it, you focus on it and you do it really quickly, you can knock these runs out just insanely fast since there's no building or anything required. You're basically just waiting for the loading screens. However, that's what I did and got myself up to level 50 pretty quick in a casual half AFK session after work while watching the Olympics, so I'm not complaining. Now, I particularly am not, as everybody knows, I'm not a big melee player. I prefer ranged DPS characters and uh, that's just my play style. There's no reason, um, obviously, with the power of the monk and the ability power squire nowadays. You can put out pretty darn nice numbers with the melee characters. However, like I said, it just doesn't meet my play style in the way I like to play. So I probably am going to be doing more building with my Lava Mancer than anything else. 
And a lot of people were concerned about some of the defenses because the prices are so high on them. They actually look really, really cool. So I'm anxious to get geared up and uh, get some Nightmare 4 going with this, with, you know, a Lava Mancer focused builder. Now, um, quite a few different options as far as ways to build, and I still have to go through and find out what all the new passives are and all that good stuff. But I'm anxious. Obviously, I'm naked right now, so my towers are not going to do anything. I'm anxious to see how well this Maul of the Earth Drake scales with defense health. Now, obviously, I'm going to be uh, doing a full report on that in the upcoming days once I get some gear and check out all the passives and everything. But I'm very excited to see what that offers. Now, it is 80 DU, which is insane. So the little petrify it does with uh, kind of the auto taunt, it will uh, shoot out a beam, of course, and petrify an enemy, and then it will force other enemies to attack it. That just sounds pretty cool. Now, one thing's for certain, the Volcano at 100 DU, one important thing to note is you're really not going to have to use more than one of these on any map. I mean, the range on them is just very, very large, as you see the affected area here. See, I actually can't even run all the way out of it, but if you look over in the corner, it's essentially one of them is covering the entire tavern here. So although it does have that massive DU cost, it seems pretty crazy as far as what it's going to be capable of doing. So excited to work with that too. Of course, I don't know how uh, defense crit is going to scale. In fact, let's take a look at that real quick. I'll throw some points into defense crit damage and see how that scales versus defense power. Well, obviously defense power is going to scale quite a bit. And it's not terrible scaling. See, 1547 just off of the 200 points. Let's compare that to, say, the Squire, where the Squire, of course, has pretty darn good scaling. So let's compare it to that real quick. 2607 on the Squire. Now, of course, it depends on how, it depends on how well these uh, defenses, of course, scale with crit damage as well, but if we look at just the basic scaling itself, it doesn't scale near as well as the Squire. Let's take a look at... Let's take a look at the Huntress as well while we're at it. 1547. 1547, so it's exactly... It's actually exactly the same as the Huntress. And, uh, of course, it's going to depend on how those defenses scale with it as well. But crazy range on the Volcano. Anxious to see what kind of damage you can get it to put out. I would guess that for 100 DU, it's going to be a pretty a pretty darn mean tower. I mean, you'd, you'd certainly think so. So, uh, anyway, more of that to come this weekend. I will be getting myself to a point where I can do some Lava Mancer builds on this Friday night's live stream. So don't forget to tune in to my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash juicebags and be live streaming Friday night at 10.30 p.m. So that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching. Click that like button. Please subscribe. And we'll be back soon with some more Lava Mancer hotness. Thanks again. See ya.